Welcome back. So you join us as we're just about to leave sunny Lincolnshire. And we're heading off on our biggest ever road trip to date. We're travelling all the way to Scotland! Scotland! Exciting! <laughs> so join us as we take you with us some of the best bits Scotland has to offer. Here's what's, what's coming, coming up. up. So we've almost made it to the campsite. We're about 30 minutes away. And the scenery is properly changing now, isn't it? All the the time. hills are all rolling, yeah. the, the roads are getting windier, and it just seems like the, the landscape is getting prettier and prettier yeah. the further we're going north at the minute. So we're on, currently on the A697, um, and we've had a really nice chip shop stop as well, haven't we? Really good, yeah. It's yeah, just that like. Was amazing. It was, it was just like a local van, the frying flyer. Yeah, that was it. it really good fish and chips as well. Yeah. Well and truly recommend them because they were stunning. Yeah. I um, have a ketchup too. You did have some ketchup. So we're just finishing our journey off going up, but like I said, the landscape's stunning at the minute. There's, there's sheep everywhere, there's cow, coos in it, it's coos in Scotland. Everywhere, yeah. So we're just heading up there now, but yeah, stunning night, stunning road trips so far, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Look at that for a sunset. That is a great oh, continued our journey we finally left England and we made it into Scotland arriving at our campsite Coldstream for the night Good morning guys. So last night we got here pretty late, so we hunked up and went to sleep pretty fast. And we're at Coldstream Holiday Park. So as we unplug, here's the campsite tour. Coldstream Holiday Park, which we found on Pitch Up, and it was situated just above the banks of the River Tweed. It was a really well equipped and family friendly site, and it offered facilities with heated amenities block with toilets and showers and there was also a laundrette and washing up area too. So had a chemical disposal point and waste and recycling bins available. A big bonus for us was that it had a well equipped park which Joshua took full advantage of. It had excellent Wi-Fi and there was also different pitch types available including the camping pods. That concludes our campsite tour which we would highly recommend. So we're now in Edinburgh and we're on the famous one mile stretch and currently Edinburgh Fringe is happening and there's little axe everywhere and it's proper cold just to it come up really here. Cool. The atmosphere is wicked in a minute isn't it? So when we did come up here we managed to find a parking spot on Just Park so that saved us a load of hassle of having to find somewhere to park when we got up here and we'll it, just show you where that was now it was and it was only about a 10 or 15 minute walk into into the town or the old town first but yeah proper cool it is and we're in the main stretch of it now and it's proper buzzing around here isn't it so we're just so gonna enjoy to it all. it's crazy it really is oh thank you It's safe to say, we've learned our lesson from these guided tours. This one in for us.
cool isn't it? <laughs> That one's not that cheap. Only twelve and a half thousand. So I think we found the most expensive whiskey in this shop for twenty grand. Safe to say we're not going home with our. Would you like to say anything before you die today? What? <laughs> 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 Raise the weapon! Hold the line! Steady! And hey, what's your name? Right, so we're just heading up to Edinburgh Castle now. But this Royal Mail, she has been a busy one, hasn't she? She has, and it's so, yeah, busy with street entertainers, with there's so much to see and do. It's been such a cool stretch, hasn't it? Yeah. So let's head up here and see what Edinburgh Castle is all about. Hey, uh, hey. We've now made it into Edinburgh Castle, but one thing to be warned of, it is sold out today. So make sure you pre-book your tickets to make sure you can get into the castle when you're up here. The honours of the Scottish Crown Jewels. There's no filming inside, so you're going to have to just take our word for it that they're pretty impressive. All I can say after that experience is, I wish Laura was as enthusiastic about my Crown Jewels. And every time you get a nice photo, you always find someone just in the middle of it. So if you are coming in here, there's loads of history you can read up on and there's boards everywhere. But if you're like us, you just like to come in and see the exhibits because they had a fun bit. Hang on a minute, what did you call them first time around? Fancy dress people. <laughs> <laughs> so, so far this has got to be my favourite exhibit. I mean they've even got a draft hoof snuff box. How cool is that? So above your head are 500 year old roof timbers. So we're just admiring all these swords and when we was looking at the Scottish crown jewels, the attendant actually told us that their sword actually weighs 16 pounds. How would they have lifted that? You'd have to have your guns on that there, wouldn't you? <laughs> so we're just coming out of the Great Hall and it is pretty great in there, isn't it? Really good. Just all the architecture and all, all the panelling, everything just had proper detail put into it. So we're just going to head up to the one o'clock gun because I think that's just about to fire. And uh, yeah, have a check that all out. Now I'm excited. Proper castle and proper cannons. This guy's getting some great shots. The views are seriously impressive from the tops of the castle. The one o'clock gun is a world famous tourist attraction, but for a long time it was also an important signal to people in Edinburgh and sailors in the park to set their clocks and watches to one o'clock. Oh! <laughs> That was cool.
And we've just had the most amazing time going through Edinburgh, aren't we? It was absolutely incredible. And it is the world's famous and biggest arts festival. And it really shows there because the atmosphere, it wasn't just buzzing, it was electric there, wasn't it? It really was. I've never known so many different things going on. Yes, there was such a variety of all different um, acts and exhibits and street entertainers. It was fantastic. And don't get me wrong, it was stupidly busy there, but it's to be expected when they're putting a show on like that on, it's gonna be busy. And you know what, if you are visiting Edinburgh, try and do it in August so you can pick up on that Edinburgh Fringe. It is, because it is for two weeks in August every year, and it was founded in 1947 as well. So it's been going for some years, so you can see how established it is. So while at the Fringe, we did stop for some food at the burger and beer restaurant and it really was really nice. Well worth a visit if you're going that way on. So currently, we're just heading towards our next campsite. We've gone over the famous bridge past Edinburgh, we've gone through Perth, and we're just now going through some beautiful countryside once again, heading up to our next stop off. So we'll see you when we get there. So as we go off to play some football and have a walk around the campsite, here's the campsite tour. Netherbrake Holiday Park, a brilliant family run holiday park. Situated just off the Kangarns and in between Perth and Dundee, the Wi-Fi was excellent here and we took full advantage of it. It had all the usual facilities, including the showers, which did lack a bit of oomph. There was a laundrette, an ironing area and a pot washing area, which we did use a couple of times had the normal chemical disposal points and the waste recycling and general waste. The park had everything you'd expect and Joshua took full advantage of this, spending hours in there as well. And here's Rick to tell you about your canine friends. So one thing they do have here is a proper dog exercise area and even I'm excited for the dogs. They've got all tyres and hoops to go through. How cool is that? And on top of that, they've even provided poo bags if they do forget. Top marks for me. And they have some amazing dens in the woodlands to play in. There were some great walks around this campsite and an amazing football pitch, which again Joshua took full advantage of. We will give this a solid 8 out of 10 and would recommend. Good morning. So as you can see, 
This is the glamorous side of van life sometimes in a small space and it can be quite hectic and untidy. Just going to sort of breakfast out now and do some bacon and eggs and then we're going to hit the road and head up to the Cangombs, aren't we? So, let's crack on with breakfast. So now breakfast is done, it really is now time to get tidied up this mess. Why is it still here? It didn't work. I must be doing it wrong. Rick, one last job to do. Rock, paper, scissors. Yeah, go on then. Oh! <laughs> Oh, ooh, I've got splashed back. Right, little tip here. When you're doing this, make sure you open the little door there because then the air goes through and it actually pours better. Job done. Give it a shake. So we're now back on the road and we're just heading up to the Cairngorms. And I have to say, already the scenery is stunning. That is looking really pretty. It is, isn't it? There. So like I said, we've got no plans today, have we? We've got no plans. We're just going to go on a whim, see where it takes us. And hopefully we'll find something as beautiful as that scenery. I know, it's looking stunning already, isn't it? <laughs> so this is currently the main road to get out to the cam gums and we're blocked in. Come on, Mr. Duckies, move out of the way. <laughs> Are they moving? So I finally got through the ducks, but that was absolutely quackers, wasn't it? They were everywhere. I mean, you couldn't see them in the field next to us, but it was like swamped with ducks, it wasn't really it? It was, wasn't it? We've never come across that before, have we? No. Only in Scotland, eh? That's so yeah. cool. That is so cool. So just as we're continuing our journey, we've just been stopped by a Scottish lady, haven't we? And I don't know if I'm feeling a bit insulted, to be fair, and if it was because I'm driving that she stopped us. <laughs> So she just told us to be cautious of the, there's a fun run going on today, so just to be careful of the runners, as if I was going to run them over. She's obviously aware of Lara. <laughs> yes. Succeeded. I didn't run them over. Yay. <laughs> there's going to be plenty more opportunities. <laughs> oh, hang on. Another one. So I'm just waiting for Laura to catch up because I chucked her out to make sure we get a good shot at the van coming past the Kangon sign. And as she does that, I'm just literally stood back checking out the beautiful Kangons. But that's where we wrap it up this week. So we'll see you next Thursday as we continue our journey through the Kangons. Live your best life. Laura! <laughs> <laughs>